Industry going into the new year with uh, we'll have a topic with Virginia Morrison who joins us from Second Chance Beer Company. Good morning, Virginia. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you, Paul? I am well. It seems to me, you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, don't be shy about it, but it seems like the craft beer industry had been preparing for this pushback into purple for a, it's like they kind of was they were anticipating it. Is that an accurate assumption? 100%. Uh, it's become patently clear that this pandemic is far from over and we've been here before so we have been restricted to only outdoor seating uh, and we've for a very long time had all of the precautions in place such as tables and spaces being set space six feet apart masks being worn gloves all of that goodness to keep our guests safe I live in OB, so I go up and down Newport pretty much daily and there's as you know a lot of craft beer venues there and while some have been able to adapt because of the, of the seating options that you just mentioned, others don't have that and they have had to shutter. So it's not good news for everybody in the sense of staying open, is it? Yeah, I mean, we there's 150, more than 150 independently owned craft breweries here in San Diego. And the vast majority of us are small businesses. So we have the same struggles that you're seeing with all of the other small businesses that are the backbone of our economy. All right, so what is the future then? Well, one day we're gonna be past this pandemic, but throughout the winter, you certainly can still safely visit uh, your breweries. A lot of us are also offering shipping throughout California and select states where that's lawful. And you can buy gift cards, you can come in and take beer to go. There's merchandise, people will have holiday bundles. There's plenty of ways that you can help your local breweries. There, uh, there's some classification that we need to go over because craft brewery brewing venues are not to be considered bars, correct? That's correct, yes. So we still have the requirement that if you are uh, to drink on site, you have to purchase a meal with that. So that's the distinction. Right. All right, and then, you know, a more esoteric question. Why has the craft brewing industry taken off? Why has it become so popular? What is it about? Oh, well, it's about community and it's about giving back and philanthropy and being creative and innovative and having those spaces, the tasting rooms or the outdoor beer gardens now where you can come and you know celebrate and have a beer, take a load off and goodness knows we could use a lot of that right now. Yeah, it seems the thing that makes it unique, the industry, is also the thing that makes it problematic for COVID-19. It's the social element, right? Absolutely. All right, so uh, as we steam ahead, the other creative options are to partner up with food vet vendors too, right? I mean, is that one of the ways workarounds? Yeah, so if uh, tasting rooms don't have a food option, uh, they can work with uh, cafes or food trucks or bring in uh, catering services so that they can provide a food and a meal on the same uh, ticket as the beer. And then you can still have uh, delicious craft beer at your favorite outdoor beer gardens. Well, Virginia, before we call it a conversation, I see a lot of levers behind you. Which is the most popular uh, flavor? Um, I would say right now probably our um, Buried in the Haze, Hazy IPA, and our um, Fistful of Gummies, which is our sour infused with Sour Patch Kids. Fistful of Dummies, did you say? <laughs> gummies, Gummies, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I'm the dummy. Okay, Fistful of Gummies, <laughs> I, I get it, Virginia. Thank you very much, I'll check it out, okay? All right, thanks, Paul. Have a great day. You too. Wreath across.